Hey guys, I'm Young, a full-time dad and a full-time professional with the goal to become the best parent possible. The Girl Dad Show is my journey interviewing fellow working parents aspiring to be both good at work and parenting. I'm going to do this by gathering and sharing unfiltered perspectives from my guests. So join me as I research parenthood one interview at a time. Hey, Josh, thanks for joining me today on the Girl Dad Show. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, thanks for having me, Young. Oh, man, I'm really excited to talk to you about your personal life, because I know you so well now on a professional level working together with you at your business. And uh, I'm really excited that you took the time to actually talk to me about who you are outside of work and kind of like maybe learn a little bit more about you there. <laughs> the other side, man. That's right. The so before side. we get into it, let's, uh, let's talk about it. So what do you do for a living? Because I know, but I don't think a lot of our listeners know what you do for a living. So it'd be great to share, start with that. So my profession, I'm a physiotherapy and I'm the co-owner of Progression Motion Physiotherapy. Basically, with your help, I've kind of taken on the role of COO. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at heart, my passion lies in with rehab services and helping people move better, ultimately. Yeah, you're, you're definitely passionate about the, the, pro uh, the product and services that you sell, and it's really amazing uh, work that you do. And I love that you've been embracing new skills and new things in your work life. Uh, and I, I'm, thank you for giving the shout out to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Speaking of work, what are some of the big projects you're working on? I, I mean, I know, but I'd love for you, uh, you to share with everybody what you're working on at PMPT and some of the big things that you have coming up. Oh, man. So initially, Joey and I were both physios at heart, like I said. So we created a business without any structure. So our big projects right now is creating the systems from marketing to the financials to the systems within the business for our employees and, and creating all that good stuff. So our big projects have been really laying down a true business foundation, man, ultimately. Our other projects include just continuing on that path of becoming better therapists, better rehab masters, ultimately. We're trying to get to that Jedi level, young. Yeah, no, I, I love it and I, I feel it. I mean, you guys are like one of the funnest clients that I get to work with and it's, it's really exciting and, and I'll do a little humble brag for you because it's, I, it's important that everyone knows how much you guys are growing. But in the two months we've worked together, you guys have almost doubled your revenue. So uh, you guys are like crushing <laughs> and it's pretty, pretty exciting times for PMPT and it's really exciting to see where you guys are headed. And I think it's a really great thing to talk about because I want to talk to you mostly about how do you balance this level of work ethic and, and determination and goal setting your parenting because you're also a very present father and you do a lot of things at work where you have to cancel meetings or you have specific schedules so you can be at specific things for your kids and i've noticed it you know working with you and it, it's like really awesome and I, that's kind of what prompted me to invite you to be on the podcast because this is something that i've been really trying to explore and figure out for myself like what is that balance between you know, really growing my career, but also really growing and being a really great parent. And so I'd love to talk to you about that. But before we get into it, can you tell me about your kids? Because I don't even know, like, <laughs> how many you have, what their names are, how old they are, like, you know, who do you love the most? Like, just kidding. But, you know, I just want to, yeah, give me the download on your kids. Oh, man, I got, I got three. So my oldest is a, a boy, Eugenio Luciano Morialli. Sounds Italian, right? Oh, very, <laughs> very me familiar name. I like it. G Dog for short. He's eight years old. Um, he's in what is he in now? Second grade, man. Jesus, he's about to go into third. Nice. And then my middle child, female, <laughs> little girl. She's six years old. Her name's Kara Mar. And then my youngest, two-year-old. That's the one that's trouble. Kara Mar or uh, Carmela Rose. So yeah, she's the one that I've been my hands full. That's awesome. So you have a two-year-old, a six-year-old, and an, what is that, a seven-year-old? An eight-year-old, eight -year you said. Yeah. Nice. And then how come the first and the last have more of an Italian name and the second has a more generic name? Uh, I don't know. Who uh, named your kids? The first one, actually, my wife named all of them. Hey, you know what? Kara is the one I chose, so that's probably why. But then Got I it. chose what is Car Luciano. Luciano? <laughs> Luciano, yeah. Luciano. Is that Luciano for all three? No, just uh, just for Gino. Yeah. 
So why does Gino have the most Italian name I've ever heard in my He's life? He's the first the born, man. So that's when we oh, got it, got it. So, Italian. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more focus and energy that goes into the first kid. Have you have you felt the same way? Yeah, man. The first one, it's it's very, like, scary. You're looking up on Google, like, oh, man. Yeah. We had some events where, like, when he came home three days in, he peed pink. So we're, I'm glad we have Google, man, because Google tells you these common things that happen when a newborn comes home. And I guess uritic crystals are common to be passed at three days in. And we're freaking out. Oh, my God. Pink, pink. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things that happen with Gino where we're like, man, I'm glad we have Google. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like really excited to hear about this. I didn't even know their names. And I feel really bad because we've been working together for two months now. It's the first <laughs> time I've ever asked you about your kid. <laughs> Dang, man. So that's not good. But I, I'll, yeah, I appreciate you your empathy on that, but I'll, I'll make sure to be better about that moving forward. So something that I've noticed about me in my kind of exploration with being a dad and also trying to grow my career is I bring a lot of my childhood with me to parenting. And so I found that like, I'm constantly trying to do things intentionally different from my parents because of X, Y, and Z reasons, or I'm trying to mimic them for X, Y, and Z reasons. So I feel like there's a lot of that, you know, inevitably, you know, that we take from our parents. And so I'd love to know what your childhood was like. So if you might, if you don't mind sharing with the listeners, like, how'd you grow up? Dave, my childhood was good, man. My mom was really present. She's uh, definitely the backbone of the family. My dad, my dad's working his butt off too. And he, he was there on the weekends to take us out racing motorcycles because he, he, he worked for IBM, but also raced motorcycles professionally. So I grew up on a racetrack, man. I grew up on the sprint car racetrack. I grew up on a motorcycle racetrack. I've been racing since I was four years old. So that's what? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. like what kind of, what kind of race, motorcycle. what kind of more? So motocross, short track, hill climbing, and then all my cousins, them. all sprint car drivers, the cars with the wings on it, the big wing on the top and they slide. What? Are yeah. you serious? I That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, and so how do you do that professionally and work at Intel? That's wild. Oh, he was IBM. IBM. Yeah. Oh, he, sorry, uh, IBM. So a lot of times uh, the professional racing world, you can get on the circuit or you can race part of the circuit. So he was racing a lot of, like when he was younger, he was doing a lot of the circuit. So that's traveling around the, the country and doing all the different tracks. But uh, when he had us, he switched to mainly local in Utah. I guess Utah had what's called the Widowmaker. It's a crazy hill that they would go up on their extended swing arm, like long tail. That's wild. So is it a big, a big sport? Like, is it a big franchise? Meaning like, do you get sponsors and like attendance? Yeah. Yeah. we got to tap into that. <laughs> I, that's my, that's my deal. That's my sport. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's bigger in the south kind of deal man where they they have more open land to be in texas uh yeah probably texas for motocross were you are you from the south or where are you from oh, no, no i'm uh, where'd you grow up san jose man all the way through no oh, san jose got it yeah, yeah I <laughs> bay area for life yeah i I'm, I'm, <laughs> i was born in oakland yeah so yeah we're, 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 no I'm, I'm here for that man i love it <laughs> yeah i love it so do you still do you still ride oh heck yeah not as much as i used to there's a lot of injury. What are you riding right now? So I, I got a, was a CR250, which is a Honda. I, I still ride. A lot of the older bikes were the, what's called two strokes, the very high windy, like, nee, nee. now they got like the four strokes, more environmentally like friendly, I guess, in that sense. But it's harder and harder to ride nowadays because there's so much restriction on, on land that you can use at what time of year. So now they have what's called a red sticker where you can only go three months out of the year. So that's the other limiting factor now is injury risk. And then also it's harder to get out there. Yeah. So do you let your kids ride? Heck yeah, man. Oh, you do. That's awesome. That's another hard lesson I learned though. I tried to get my son on the bike at three years old to beat me. Oh, he's beating me. It, it didn't work out. <laughs> I got training well, wheels you... on a little, on a little uh, PW50, a little tiny mini bike. He rode it. But then he did what's called whiskey throttle. You hold it wide open and then you hit the fence head on. <laughs> he flipped over the handlebars and it took a while to get confidence to ride again, man. He's barely like rocking at eight, but he's doing it now. He's killing it now. Is it, oh my God. This is crazy. All my kids ride. 
because it's like so funny to me because like my kids like jump rope the wrong way and i'm like oh my god don't hurt yourself <laughs> and you're just like get that helmet on and go go rip yeah. through this motorized bike no my, are your girls doing it too or just your boy yeah my girl my uh my middle kara she's my middle child she's rocking too she's faster than gino so is it because you grew up writing and you, you you're like i'm fine i'm i'm healthy yeah. i'm fine so you're like well, i just gotta do this and do you feel like that actually creates like don't i mean do you know what i'm saying when i say like yeah. some parents are very cautious about their kids health, uh, physical safety yeah no we're we definitely we grew up in an extreme sport family my mom grew up on a sprint car track too so she didn't i'd come home all i had scars all over my body man so she she would just say like rub some dirt on it like she didn't even Oh, too bad. <laughs> she, really? Mother, she would see me come home because I've been dating my wife since sixth grade, which we, if you want to get into that later. But yeah, I would come home all gravel in my cuts. you would be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wasn't used to that. Uh, no, I do want to get into that. Did you just <laughs> say you've been dating your wife since the sixth grade? Well, I, we've been friends since the sixth grade. We didn't date until high school, really. Like, uh, but oh, grad. you guys, you guys met in the sixth grade, yeah. got more serious in high school. You know, and when did you guys get married? Dang, man, 2012. So, so way after. Yeah, because I went to grad school, so that was part of the whole. Getting did you guys doctor. were you guys still together during that time, or? Oh, uh, we went to college together. Wow. Yeah, we went to. Oh my gosh. School together, high school together, college together. You guys are legitimately high school sweethearts, like oh. actual quintessential high school oh, sweethearts. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so cool. Oh, jeez. <laughs> were your parents as well? Nah. As they met, they met at a wedding and my dad's a few years older. So he met them because of the people he races with were her cousins. So that's how the whole circle mm. was connected. My, my dad was racing. He was friends with her cousins that are racers. And then at a wedding they met. So what does your, what does your wife think about you letting your kids ride motorcycles? Yeah, she's a little bit, but she's, she played high level softball, D one softball. So she's on the same page as me. It's Athlete like, as well. On it. Yeah. <laughs> and then is that, college, let him get up. Is that why you went to physio because of like the physical injuries and kind of like that physical peak performance that you know? Nah, for me, I love, I guess the physical peak performance side of it. I love studying physiology, man. I love studying how you can pull the levers of the body and, and cause adaption and, and changes. So I used to study all that in like eighth grade because I, yeah. I was a little pudgy kid. So I started weightlifting in eighth grade to kind of change my body into a, a more physical looking body. And then that journey, that's when all the articles came out and reading. And, and then, yeah. I, you know, it's a funny story, man. I actually was, started out in undergrad as a software engineer. <laughs> no way. Yeah, man. I wanted to make money. So I was like, wait, well, how do you make money? <laughs> I was focused on the money aspects of it. Yeah. And then my dad was like, what the heck, man? You like physiology. Why don't you do that? And I was like, I started looking into PT and pre-med. I was pre-med actually. So yeah, I went down that rabbit hole. Well, are, do you have any regrets? Not at all. Yeah. It's been fun, man. I don't think I'd be happy in a hospital setting because I was originally like after software engineer, I was looking at physiatry, which is like a medical doctor. Look at you now. I mean, the reality is you're going to make a crap ton of money this year. So like, yeah, like I'm you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to be happy and make money. So uh, it's just, it's all, it's all perspective in that sense. Right. And like how you manage your passion and your happiness. Uh, so yeah. I'm sorry for putting you on the spot there, but <laughs> I guess now everyone knows you're going to make a lot of money this year. Oh, geez. Yeah. But you're going to do good this year, right? Like you and I both know it. I mean, the business is on track to doing really well this year, so it's going to be great. So I, in some ways there's no, there's no like regret on that side because now you're you're going to get both best of both worlds i do want to say though like do you think that you being like an athlete kind of growing up in that kind of like extreme sports arena has led you to run your business and kind of grow this way a little bit more aggressively because i don't know is there any parallels there or do you feel like it's, Actually, it's not no, man. it's the opposite it's funny on the bike it's almost like you put on your mask almost like like the mumba like it's like you have an alter ego. Like when I'm on the bike, I'm a different person. I'm aggressive. I'm uh, like going after it. I'm you let it out. Angry. Off the bike, I'm a little bit more chill, more wanting, I guess, stability. So yeah, when I first made the jump from being an employee at a location several years back to being a co-owner, that, that actually was a hard jump because then it was like I had two kids at the time. So it's like, 
balancing all the risk associated with that. So I guess that's probably the big thing was I had other variables to consider other than just myself. So I, I would say no, because it is like almost like an alter ego on the motorcycle. Do you think that that triggered once you had kids? I think once I had kids, man, because then it's like, oh, man, I got to like provide and make sure that they're stable. And Isn't that something right there, man? Because I feel like I used to be so aggressive too. like I, I would start a business and like just dive head deep into it and like I wouldn't worry, you know, because I'm like, just no fear, you know, just absolutely no fear at all. And then I had kids and now I'm like scared to do anything. And it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just the reality, right? And so maybe not all everyone feels that way and maybe something I could work on, but I don't know if I want to, right? Because it's yeah. just like, yeah, I don't want, it's just not worth the risk anymore to like not have income coming in, stability and all those things because I want to be able to provide a certain level of a uh, lifestyle for my kids and family. And so... Uh, I'm, uh, is that kind of like what you're thinking as well too, or? Yeah, I take big breaths with that stuff because I, I got exposed to some really hard stuff working with some of these older folks that you, you, you ask them, man, if you can talk to your 20 year old self right now, what would you tell them? And every single time it's like, don't worry, it'll work out. Be with your family. Time matters more. So I'm like, I always have that in my head because it's always like we're in a drive, like, let's go, let's go. So we have like two resources. We have the money, we have the time. And then it starts becoming like time becomes more important with the family. And then it's like you're trying to balance those two, which we can get into. But man, that is the toughest part about being a business owner is, is trying to still be there for your kids, be there for the first birthday, be there for their athletics. Because when you're an owner, man, you, you're running multiple shows with multiple hats, at least in the beginning. So that, that is a big one. And those older folks, man, they bring perspective because then you're like, dang, I don't want to be that 80 year old on my deathbed being like, I wish I would have did this or that. I actually have to argue because I mean, I do know you so per on a professional side and there are times where you're like, no, that's a hard no. I can't do that time or I can't take that meeting or I can't do that project because I'm with my kids or I'm, you yeah. know, I'm responsible for, you know, this piece of schoolwork or you have a hard boundary for yeah. time with your kids. I mean, it's pretty hard. It's much and, harder than most business people, right? And so that's a statement in itself. So do you know what I'm talking about? That's because of those people. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Because it becomes you, you have to set boundary. You have to set intention. So if you're, if you're setting a block of time to doing something, be present for that block of time you set instead of trying to multitask. Yeah. And trying to be like, oh, I'm doing calls and then I'm doing kid stuff. It's like you set that block of time. That's what you're doing. And then you move on the next block of time, whatever intention it is, you do it. So that, that's kind of like how I've been trying to set my my life up where it's making sure that all those things are, are met from a dad's perspective and from business perspective. I, I know I'm really interested in this because I actually have a, like a massively micro level calendaring system. And I, and I'm very similar, like, and I don't know if you're doing it to the extent that I'm doing it. Cause people tell me I'm psychotic with my calendar, <laughs> but I literally like have it intentionally scheduled out for like how I want to allocate my time. Cause I have the same, I have a similar philosophy that like time is the most valuable resource and you can use it to make more money. You can use it to make money, making money. You can use it to spend time with your family. You can use it on your health. You can use it on your it's like there's a lot of different buckets that you want to fill in your life, right? And like, and how you spend your time is literally the the conversation, right? It's like it's it's how you control your destiny, how you control your life, in my opinion. And so I've like done it very mathematically. And you're you're alluding to that. Do you do you do that? Are you like macro level saying like I'm going to spend these hours a day with my family and these hours a day working, and within work you're doing these projects? You have to, because if you don't, the day flies by, and then it's like, what did I do? I got to tell a funny story because I don't know how it happened, but the other week you, me and Joey were talking at the, um, at our normal weekly check-in and I don't know how it happened, but like, I, I don't, maybe it's testosterone or like male ego, but it like escalated into this really weird competition between the three of us to see who could lose the most body fat by August 31st. Right. It's the dumbest thing. Cause anybody that knows me knows that's, that's not a competition I would like take right like i love taco bell i love drinking beer i'm like i'm like the unhealthiest person ever in the sense of like intake and diet so getting to like the lowest body fat percentage is not probably ideal for me but i don't know it was just like we we're just like ramping up so it just kept amping up and amping up and i'm very competitive and so 
I don't know how we agreed to it, but <laughs> it's been a huge, like, I know it's funny. It's funny to think about. And I think about it and I talk to my wife. She's like, you're an idiot. Why would you agree to a competition like that? You're going to lose. And I'm like, I'm not going to lose. Now I'm going to win even more. But like trying to like incorporate that into my schedule has been just totally like challenging for me. Like, how do I squeeze in my diet with my kids? Like, how do you do that? Like when you have this now that you're the face of the same challenge, like how are you incorporating this new challenge with your schedule with your kids? Like, how do you take a new thing and add it into your current schedule? So I'm up at 5.30 a.m. training every day. Working out. Saturday, Sunday. So I, I got my training regimen is already set. So every now it's just a manipulating the variables. So if I want to lose body fat, there's certain things I got to do, like from a lifting perspective, muscle mass. Oh, um, little yeah. tip for you, muscle no, mass. No man, I know you need to give me more pointers. We're doing percent body fat. That's right. <laughs> it's a very specific competition. Yeah, it's not yes. weight loss. It's body fat percentage. So. <laughs> oh man, I got to research and get get caught up. But you guys are like doctors in this stuff, so it's really <laughs> it's really unfair. <laughs> So you just do it by basically waking up before your kids wake up. Yeah, that's the key, man. Uh, if you want to get things done, you wake up before they wake up. Oh, man. And so then you just crank out what you need to do, like your workout, your mental, physical stuff. You just do at five in the morning. And then when do your kids wake up? My kids are up usually by 730. My son's a nut, though. He'll set an alarm and wake up at 630 and kind of play in his room. So I, he I wants of, to wake up at 630. Oh, yeah. He's a nut, man. He's a type A. Like, he's going to be a CEO. <laughs> he's like, Dude. we call him the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, he's he's right. you know what he does at the park? Yeah. When uh, COVID was really strict, it still is, but really strict at the park. He had kids in line and he was letting one at a time up the, 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 the ladder to go down the slide. He, he him and my daughter playground. created roles at the thing and everybody listened and was in line going up one at a time. And he'd be like, wait, uh, wait, can I meet your kid? I definitely. Oh, my son, you'll crack up, man. He wants to have Dude. his own YouTube channel and everything. He does or he will? Yeah. He wants, he does. He wants it. But every time I film him, I have to get him comfortable in front of the camera, man. Because as the camera turns on, he's like, uh, uh. Uh, so I got to like desensitize him to it <laughs> more than that. Like, dude, the moment he turns 16, like, please let, let him intern. I want to like, I want to like, see if I can build a business with them. Oh, uh, you know? yeah. Jeez. I'll, yeah. Well, I'll be equal partners with them. And like, I have so many small <laughs> projects that I'm trying to build. <laughs> I love that he's eight years old and he sets an alarm to wake up. That's insane. Oh yeah. No. Are you, he's a beast. He goes outside on his lunch break and does sprints. Cause I told him like, hey, you got to train. Like he'll go outside and do his five sprints on his lunch break. He'll run up and down the, he'll run up and down the driveway. Wait, so you're raising him to be like this. He's kind of like, his personality is already there, man. I, I am trying, like, I don't really try and push anything on them yet. Like we have all the values and everything that we instill, but that kind of stuff. Like I'm telling you when he was four years old, not five years old, he ran a nine minute mile. And he was crying the whole time, like tears. I didn't tell him to do it. I, I challenged him. That's how like competitive he is. I said, oh yeah, let's see if you can run a mile. And he would not stop. People thought I was like forcing him. He was crying while he's doing it. He wouldn't stop. That's what type of personality it is. Wait, are you like that? <laughs> no, he's, it's probably from my wife's side. Well, so then what are you doing when he finishes? Are you like, like loving like, him hey, for it? Or? Know, good job, man. <laughs> That's impressive. So we tell everybody like, he loves to hear that side, so. Dude, I, I feel like I'm doing parenting all wrong. <laughs> My kid, like, just tries something that she's never done before. And I'm like, I have a balloons. I have, like, a skydiver <laughs> dropping, like, like confetti. Like, you, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Nah. That's amazing. Did you, get, did you get brought up with tough love? And are you bringing your kid up with tough love? Like, how, how is this kid so, like, determined and resilient? I don't think mine wasn't too bad. Tough love. My wife grew up a little bit more tough love. Like she came from an athletic background, very athletic family. Her dad, at least MVP of four sports. So she's probably the one that's pushing a little bit more of that side. I grew up, my, my parents were pretty laid back. Like how I am, man. Like give it a shot, give it a try. It was more of like, find what you like, do it. But the big thing was don't quit. If you start something, don't stop. That was like a big philosophy. Yeah. That sounds like your son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When and you say you're very chill and laid back, but you're not like in business, you and Joey are so aggressive. I've told you guys this multiple times. I'm like, I don't know anybody that like, is this like aggressive? Like you guys are, you guys are moving like so fast. 
it's not normal to double your revenue in six weeks. It's not, that's not normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you, yeah, you guys like, you guys like, you guys, when you guys want something, you guys go for it. And so oh, yeah. um, it's going to be more satisfying even knowing that when I beat you guys in this body fat percentage <laughs> contest. <laughs> You're not gonna win, Young. I, I I I feel like I won't, but I'm gonna try. We're gonna have to check in so we can see our progress. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Are there any parallels between your your business life and your parenting life? Do you feel like you're the same, or do you feel like there's different things about that? I think like this one quote. What is it? Once you see it, you see it in all things. So that's what like learning from you is actually helping me with my parenting, helping me with my training, helping me with my physiotherapy. Because of the structure that you've kind of taught us with business, I'm taking that structure and using it in my life now, man. Like, even are you more serious? So. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it is. It's principles, man. Yeah, there's principles that go across all genres. So it's like now I'm seeing that. Now I'm like I have I have like a what do you call it financial model for my personal now. Oh my god, that's awesome. So it's it's like <laughs> reverse engineer what you want, build it, build it out, and see what it takes to get there. Yeah, have a success mentality. That's right. Like define your success. That's so funny. I, I will tell you right now, I have tried doing performance management conversations with my wife. That does not go well. <laughs> I know. So don't problem. take that part over to your yeah. personal. Take that part to keep it in work, all right? Don't yeah, do that over uh, there. Yeah, because be yeah, that does not work out well at all. <laughs> uh, but I, I definitely will do it on my kids, except I just like, I'm like a pushover when it comes to my kids for some reason, because I'm, I'm like pretty hard nosed when it's at work. And I'm pretty disciplined when it comes to work ethic, work processes and, and philosophies. But when it comes to my kids, like I'll try like once or twice and then I just like bend. Like, do you, do you have that or do you not have no issue? My little girl, my two year old, Carmela, she's trouble. Yeah, she what? She's, she's trouble. Yeah, she is she trouble because you bend, you, you, you acquiesce. Oh, got she's it. Yeah, she's your baby man. girl. She's she's. She's interested, like reddish blonde hair, green eyes, like lights. And I'm like, where the heck does this kid come from, man? We're all dark skin, like brown eyes. Yeah, where did that kid come from? No, I'm just yeah, kidding. We're genes, man. Um, yeah. Her, mom, her mom's side has Irish. My side, I guess the Italian side has some. My great, great, great uncle had green eyes. So my son has green eyes. My daughter has green eyes. My youngest. So you are you are strong. You're able to be stronger with your oldest, but your youngest, yeah. you also. The little oh, okay. one, she cries, and one son's like, "Just give it to her." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So I feel a little less bad because you're like you're just completely like surprising me with uh, your 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 kid stories of like <laughs> it, like this fearless like determination. It's like really amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to have my kid be like that. That's fantastic. <laughs> Very cool. So I actually uh, want to kind of move towards just a couple of questions that I want to ask every guest on my show. And we can we can basically wrap this up because I know you have a busy schedule and a busy day. So if you don't mind, let me let me get right into those four questions that I want to ask everybody and, and see where you're where you're at with these. Okay. All right. So what advice do you have for other parents and soon to be parents? I, I, just like we're saying, the allocation of time is going to be key. Be present during the time you're with your kids. Be fully present and listen. A lot of times with uh, with kids, we we don't listen. We don't hear them out. We don't truly hear them. So a lot of times they don't feel heard. So it's especially when they're in like five, six, seven, eight years old. They're talking. A lot of times it's like, yeah, what are you talking about? But make sure you listen and give them give them what's the word? I can't think of the word right now. But basically, confirmation that you hear them is one of my big. I've taken some parenting courses to try and learn how to how to be just better, man. Be present. And there's this one course called Ally Parenting, which kind of makes you aware of how much sometimes we don't listen to them. I I love that you're studying parenting. Yeah. Wow, you take this seriously. Like that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So you're like reading books about it. You're like trying to be the best parent. You are competitive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I could take a lot of. A lot of pages from your book. I mean, I got to get more, I got to get more literal about this because I think I'm doing this podcast to learn about how to do parenting better because I'm going to talk to other parents, right? That are doing the same thing as me and navigating it. But I, I haven't really picked up a parenting book since my first kid. So I'll start doing that as well, too. Thank, yeah, that's great. If you can go back and tell yourself one thing before having kids, what would it be? Oh, dang. 
make the jump faster. Cause I, I had a whole year where I was going back and forth for the biz, the business. Cause I was so fearful. There were so many times and I would meditate on it. I would go on hikes and it's like trying to listen to that inner voice of like, she'd do it. And then it finally did, but I was like, do it earlier. Do it so, earlier. Yeah. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. I love that quote. That is really good. That's a good business quote. Actually, is, that's a business quote, right? Cause that sounds much, yeah, much more like a business. Quote. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And I, it's so funny that you say that because in hindsight, I'd actually probably say the same thing too. I probably should have started earlier. I was so scared for, for no reason at all. Yeah. Okay, cool. What is your all time favorite business book? Which one? Which one? There's so many, man. We've done yeah, so many. You read a lot. Yeah. You guys, you enjoy your constantly quoting business books. It's like, yeah. <laughs> E-Myth. 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 Oh yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That one brings awareness to like the whole process of building to all the way to the point of sale and also give me perspective. I think a lot of times within the business community, we always have the hat of being the operator and the owner. So it's like starting to understand that you want to be the owner, not always just the operator. That's right. That's awesome, man. Very cool. And then what is the most surprising thing that you learned about yourself about parenting? Dang, unconditional love for sure, man. Loving yeah. something. Like, and then also realizing like, dang, it's tough, but man, I want to trade it for the world. Yeah. That's awesome, man. (laughs) That's awesome answer. Yeah. I, yeah, I completely agree with that sentiment. I feel like I, everyone says it's so cliche, but you you don't realize how much you can love something. Yeah. Until you have a kid and then you're like, oh my God, I can love more. This is crazy. (laughs) Very cool, man. Well, that was my, uh, that was my set of questions. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me here today and spending your valuable time talking to me about parenting and getting to know me, uh, getting to know you better. Hey, thanks, young. Yeah. I hope you had a good time and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. For sure. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the girl dad show. We hope you enjoyed that interview. If you want to subscribe to our email list and learn more, you can head over to the girl dad Thank you and see you next time.